build a network all by themselves. There are people out there which have developed those routing protocols, open WRT as a software for the meshing, access points, asterisk, um, as the VOIP software, but it's not easy enough. The challenge is I need to stick these devices together, I need to have a server, I need to know how this all works. Um, so the idea was born of what is now called Village Telco. If you look at villagetelco.org, you'll find this. I think there's actually some folks um, with these um, um, solutions around here somewhere. And basically what was created is for one, a device, which is now being manufactured commercially and sold. So people who want to set up these village telcos can go somewhere and purchase this device. It's open hardware design, it's open software integration, and start their own telcos on a really small level and meshing their villages up with this, and then connecting village by village um, using long distance Wi-Fi or other broadband technologies to provide real phone service on a grassroots level and grow this. Um, I think this is a great example where all kinds of different technologists came together to develop a single solution, which is really, really targeted um, at some of the core problems. Um, it's very challenging often to um, do this by yourself if you're out there in one of those places. You have very slow internet access often at best. You don't have the experience. You didn't grow up immersed in technology as we all are here. So having folks help you pull this together, working hand in hand between developers in the US and Europe and um, people who are into technology and want to use those systems out in rural Africa, in Haiti, wherever it is, working hand in hand together is an amazing approach and one you know, we all used to in the software development world, but we can bring this to a much further state. Once you have this out there, you can disseminate information like sanitation, rural electrification and things like this. They all build upon technologies which allow you to communicate. So looking for a moment here, what I think here are concrete options for asterisk related applications. Obviously, um, we want to connect areas where carriers don't want to connect or where it's too expensive to use carriers to make sure their offerings are real and not just um, maximizing profits, but really provide the service we need. Um, one example is after um, one of the organizations we worked with put asterisk in, in the VYP system, they saw their support calls from their hospitals um, go up by threefold, and they actually saw, realized this is something good because people ask much more questions because they're not timed by the minute to pay for each call and the budgets are really slow. So they could pick up the phone and have lengthy discussions with doctors to get help in rural healthcare centers, um, to ask whatever questions they needed to get answered, and ultimately it improved healthcare immediately for them. That was a location in southern Uganda. Um, of course, um, VOIP prepaid um, cards or prepaid calling cards in general for GSM, for example, is the standard. We need those solutions out there. I know there are companies in the room, A2 Billing and others, who make these great solutions. Let's see how we can get them out there to these entrepreneurs, like Village Telco entrepreneurs and others, to apply them so they can as well be a sustainable business, charge small fees, employ people, and create a, a sustainable um, business in their communities. Education resources. Books are expensive, you have to print them, you have to get them out to the locations. Being able to use um, voice to disseminate content or have people being able to go to a place and dial into a site of an IVR system to get information ad hoc when they need it is really inexpensive, has a huge impact. Voice is always still the killer application. We still have a lot of people who are illiterate being able to have audio to access information or video to show you how certain things can be done. Um, and encourage you to, to adopt that to your local needs is a, a huge um, component. IVR applications, of course, video conferencing for healthcare, for education, and then obviously what I mentioned, um, being able to get into rural areas at a fraction of the cost of traditional cal carriers. And really we see once you give them a bit of run for the money, they start changing and looking at you differently. Initially they'll tell you, hey, you can't go out there, it's not sustainable, it's way too expensive, we can't set up a base station. Suddenly you do it and suddenly you're like, hey, um, what's your license? How do you actually do this? So think about this, think this through, and suddenly you see competition is healthy out there. It gets more villages covered, it gets more people access to 
reliable communication. And this is what we're working on. We want to include um, service providers into this. We think they are part of the solution, but we do need to challenge them to come up with appropriate solutions and not just take the easy way out of saying, someone give me millions of dollars to get this started. So a few challenges I mentioned already. Often it's complex. I can do a whole lot of things with asterisk, but there's a whole lot of things sometimes I still need to know to do those things. So the more we can um, make this easy um, for, for newbies to use, support them, have prepackaged solutions, the easier it will be for them to deploy it, the higher the adoption rate will be. Um, Often solutions rely on many different pieces in order to put a wireless network with VOIP on top of it and meshing underneath it. There are so many pieces of software and hardware stacked on top of each other, which not always are designed to work together. So there's a lot of knowledge I need. Things like the um, Village Telco project is trying to bring this together and make it easy to use. If we can think through that in the development process, that's hugely helpful. And often, it's a surprise when a developer realizes, hey, my software is being used by a guy pedaling on a bicycle and making a phone call. No one thought of that when the software was created. Um, so being in touch with the users out in those areas allows you really to think, hey, maybe I need to think about how to make this as power efficient as possible so the guy on the bicycle gets as many minutes out of it as possible. And that can be a simple side effect of just taking it into account when you do your software or hardware development or whatever you do. Um, so being in communication, I think, with your users is really important. So to um, end this, I've got a few um, things I want to ask for um, here, which is the first one, make it easy to use. Keep in mind there are people out there who really can benefit from your solutions, who have the capacity to use them, but they don't come from the same background. They didn't have the privilege to go to school, tinker with PCs since they're six years old, um, have access to broadband, get the chance to compile software as they grow up and learn how to read and write. Um, we need to help them and we need to make it easy. Um, this is even more important than it is out here for your regular user base. Make it work out of the box is an extension, of course, of make it easy. But again, the Village Telco project as an example. Other things, having pre-configured solutions people can start building upon and start modifying for their own needs. And you can do this by collaborating with folks out there who are using your applications already. See how they use it and see if we can include that in sample configurations and in, in um, maybe um, versions which are pre-set up like this. There are often people who want to maintain and support those kind of things next to doing other work. And then, if it's, we know it's complicated and it will be never super simple, but we need to document well. Often, um, people who aren't um, all that familiar download some software, want to use, and realize the documentation actually three um, versions behind what they're currently using, things like this. We all hate to document. I'm totally including myself into that. But putting some time um, in that with a specific point of view of users in the developing world getting access to your technology will be really, really helpful. And um, those folks will be really happy as well to give you feedback of what problems they encountered. And if we have some patience to take that in, um, we can create great um, documentation specifically for their needs. And then this only works if you engage with those users and those um, geographies and those places. Get together with them on mailing lists, maybe dedicated mailing lists for people who are interested in those specific subjects to learn how it's actually being used out there and, and what problems they are encounter and what opportunities there are and how things could be improved um, for their specific needs. With that, we get, I think, much more than just better applications and, and solutions. We get a rich dialogue between people who are living in completely different circumstances than us, and we understand much better their needs in general. And we come up with great ideas, probably, which we haven't even thought of their needs before. May it be completely out of the box of um, how to address um, food shortages or medical um, challenges or electrification or sanitation. By knowing and talking to the people out there, and we have the ability over the internet to do so, and having a specific topic to start with, 
um, around the applications you are working on, and then you learn more and more. And I think we all will be more engaged, and only if we're engaged, we really can provide solutions. So with that, thank you. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> <laughs>